the Marvel Cinematic Universe meets Stranger Things. This is my review for Godzilla, Kong Skull Island, and Godzilla's King of the Monsters. A, B, N. It's headphones nailed! What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with a follow-up review for um, my continued watching of the Godzilla and King Kong films. So for this review, it's going to be a trilogy of films as we approach my review, or my watching and review for Godzilla vs. Kong. So in this review, I'm going to cover in bulk um, Godzilla 2014, Kong Skull Island from 2017, and Godzilla King of the Monsters from 2019. So essentially, Essentially, this trio of films sets up the monster verse of films centered around Godzilla and King Kong and brings in um, several other monsters and sets up the ultimate fight between um, Godzilla and King Kong. So after I watched the respective original films that were released back in 1933 and 44 or 45, I think, I decided to follow that up with these particular sets of films, uh, partly because it sets up the MonsterVerse, but also because these films look like they were proper sequels and setups to the um original films. There were earlier releases for them as well, I think from the 90s and early 2000s, but from what I could tell they were generally not re received very well, um, or at least not as well as this trilogy of films, so I skipped those and went straight to these. So overall the films were good and enjoyable. They felt like good sequels to the very original films because they referenced them uh, at least the Godzilla side referenced the original film film very well, um, and even King Kong didn't really um, mention the original King Kong film, but did refer back to Godzilla. Um, so basically, they were normalizing the monster verse in this in this set of films, so that we could go forward with the monster verse. Um, and from there, overall, I want to say as a bit of um, doing a summary first is that the films were very well done. They set up the creatures not necessarily as being bad guys but being tenuous good guys that they're gonna be there for humans as needed but we have to understand that they are titans and the human survival doesn't necessarily or basically humans are surviving at the whim and fancy of these titans. Um, and from there, the one thing I want to say that they set up well and they progressed well over time, and I actually wanted more of, was the organization known as Monarch. So this is one part of um, my re mentioning and relating this to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, in that Monarch feels a lot like um, S.H.I.E.L.D. in that they have the technology, seeming res seemingly endless resources, and their own... Um, positives and negatives as far as being able to monitor track and sort of contain the threat but at least have more information than the public at large but keep it secret so that um, information doesn't get out but ultimately because it's a private organization and not necessarily perfect that it's not gonna go as well as they planned and I want to say that it reflects similar to the first Avengers film when the Tesseract information gets out and ultimately leads to the fight with Loki um, that sets off the whole um, story arc with Thanos that superheroes exist, villains exist, we're not the only planet in the galaxy um, as far as... Um, being basically not being the only um, intelligent beings in the galaxy so overall I feel like that was well done here. Um, the other part that relates to the Marvel Cinematic Universe is that the film contains very many or a few characters from the Marvel Cinematic Universe so in Godzilla we have Elizabeth Ol Olsen who stars as the Scarlet Witch and in King Kong we have um, 
I'm oh, sorry, in Kong Skull Island, we have Brie Larson, who stars as Captain Marvel, Samuel Jackson, who stars as uh, Nick Fury, and um, Tom Hiddleston, who stars as Loki. So I was kind of hoping that we would get to see all of them in Godzilla King of the Monsters, but they actually pivoted there a little bit into Stranger Things, where we have all these different monsters, um, and that Godzilla King of the Monsters introduces... Um, Millie Bobby Brown as an important character who's also starring in um, Godzilla vs. Kong. So the translation into Stranger Thing happens because in King of the Monsters we have um, King, King Ghidorah who generally or basically the three-headed dragon but the characters in Godzilla kind of resemble um, the Mind Flyer or Mind Flayer I guess. So we have that kind of um, transition, so having Millie Bobby Brown um, here kind of works just because it's kind of in her wheelhouse as far as interacting and having general expressions to match these um, monsters of t or titan monsters or monster titans in the films. So overall the films generally work, they're very enjoyable, they kind of fix, or they basically fix the issues I had with the original films which is basically the graphics and CGI-ness of it. So basically the films benefit from bigger budgets, computer technology, and all of that to bring the monsters to life and uh, show their massive awesomeness. So. You also kind of, and this goes back to my review for the original Godzilla and original King Kong, that you see how good they did with what they had at hand, and now that we have the abilities to make them even more massive and to scale and scope how much more um, awesome they are and how good of a job they did. Um, the only thing that was kind of a downside was in the 2014 Godzilla, they did not really have enough of a character development for me that made me want to really care about any of the characters. Um, Kong Skull Island and Godzilla King of the Monsters kind of fixed that for me, so I want to say that in general that worked. Um, they were better, so the first Godzilla film kind of stands out, or the 2014 Godzilla film stands out a little bit more on that front just because it's the first one, but it looks like they basically fixed those issues that people had. Um, reading online as well, the other thing that was of note was people complaining about the sh look and shape of Godzilla. So for me, I was hit or miss. Um, I remember watching the trailers back in the day and I kind of didn't like the look, but in some angles he looked close enough to the original Godzilla so it worked, but then it, like in the movie posters and in other angles he, he looked kind of like a overweight aging Godzilla, so that kind of didn't work for me. Um, I was reading that I guess the producers or directors opted for that look to make it more realistic that that would be his size to support um his size and weight and features and all of that so i uh, to me that was kind of flimsy because granted you're creating a you're trying to substantiate a fake character so for me i didn't really have an issue with the first one but seeing what they did with the character in the films it kind of made sense to have that size so it was, for me it was less that it's a matter of supporting the size and weight it was more of having to support the various um, actions, movements, and features that they wanted the character to have in the film. So having that scrawny T-Rex style Godzilla from the first film does not really make much sense and would not support him being king of the monsters. So overall if I was to grade the films I would probably give them about a B plus, A minus, about a 88 to 92 percent. In general they were good, the graphics and CGI definitely benefits or is a definite um, positive for the films. Stories were okay, they can, you kind of have to, have to fit the story to the characters for what you want them to do. Um, of the two Godzilla films, the 2019 version was better to me just because of the character, develop, the character development and further progression of the Monarch storyline worked for me, so not to say that the first Godzilla film was bad, um, it was 
generally good as far as what they had the character do, but the character or the other character developments were not quite as good. So with that being said, um, I'm going to start my watching of Godzilla vs Kong to see how that holds up. Um, and see if it's a good, if it's going to be kind of a final film in the franchise or if they're going to continue with the monster verse and have more monsters or um, expand from there or see what they do or anything like that. Um, so that's all there is for this particular review. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at uh, PatelN01. The website is PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And of course, as patrons, look out for a new bonus episode and upcoming content episode and post um, shortly after this episode, but um, in the next maybe day or so as far as updates there and some new news um, coming there as well. And that can be found on the Patreon at patreon.com slash PatelN01. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode, and until next time.